sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Muhammad masiyat onankan Wa salatu wa salamu alayka ya saffat al-anbiya wa al-mursalin Amma ba'd fa'awzu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن الكريم قل بفضل الله وبرحمته فبذلك فليفرحوا صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم وقد صدقت أنت يا سيدي يا سيدي يا سيدي يا مكي يا مدني يا عربي يا قرشي يا هاشمي ويا سيدنا يا سيدنا يا سيدنا يا حبيبنا يا طبيبنا يا حبيب المصطفى المجتبى صلى الله عليه وسلم الحمد لله on yet another auspicious occasion on this delightful day when we have gathered here to celebrate and to commemorate the maulid of rasulullah صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم first and foremost i would like to express my my gratitude to all the organizers of this beautiful event and my gratefulness is imparted to Habibi Mukarram Janabi Shuja Sahib, Janabi Ayub Sahib, and all the organizers who have worked hard in organizing this beautiful event to commemorate the Mawlid of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. The subject that I've been given by the brothers to address his mawlid, the, the legal effect of mawlid, the hukum shari of commemorating the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Before I embark upon my subject, first I would like to generate a foundation for this subject. And this is what you can see, alhamdulillah, displayed in this, the ahkam shari'ah, the commands of sharia. You have fard, haram, wajib, makru, tahrimi. Briefly, um, inshallah ta'ala, will explain some terminology. But before we discuss that, it is important that we define the term mawlid. Mawlid. What is mawlid? What is milad? The word mawlid he has a linguistic meaning and then he has a technical meaning. As all the ahkam shari'ah, whenever we discuss a term, in all my talks, I try to begin with the linguistic meaning of the word and then the technical meaning in shari'ah. So inshallah, first we will begin with the word mawlid itself. Remember, mawlid denotes three meanings. One is the masdar. A lot of people think that maulid is alis muzarf, a noun of time or place only and nothing but that. Remember, maulid is not only alis muzarf. This is this terminology that I'm using that's for tulabul ilam, for students of deen, those who are studying the sciences of sharia or familiar with the, the Arabic language or Arabic grammar. Mawlid is alismu zarf. It can be zarf of zaman, it can be zarf of makan, a noun for time and place. But it is also a verbal noun, a masdar. Masdar is a verbal noun, a derivative noun, a noun from which verbs are derived. For instance, we say to help. To help is a verbal noun. And if I say I am helping, that is a verb that is derived from the verbal noun. I helped, that's a past active voice. al fil al-Madi al-Ma'roof, or past passive voice will be Nusira, Nasara, Nusira, Ansuru, Unsaru, Yansuru, Yunsaru, imperfect active voice, imperfect passive voice. All of these are derived from the verbal noun, the Mustar. So when we say Mawlid is a Mustar, it is a verbal noun, the meaning of that is the actual birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And when we say Mawlid is al ismu zarf, a noun of time or a noun of place, if it's a noun of time, 
then that is referring to the birthday of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And if it's the noun of place, then that is the birthplace of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So if by the word Mawlid we are referring to the Masdar, the verbal noun, then that is the actual birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And if you are referring to the noun of time or place, if it is time, then that is the 12th of Rabi'ul Awwal or Monday. That is the time of the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And if you are referring to the zarf makan, then that is Makkatul Mukarrama. That is the place of the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So is that clear? Do you all understand this? Mawlid has three possibilities. One is the verbal noun, that is the masdar. And the second is al ismu zarf, makan or zaman. If it is zaman, a noun of time, then that is the birth day of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa If it's place, then that is the birth place of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa We can debate about one may think that we can't commemorate the birthday of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Why? Because some may think that the companions did not celebrate the birthday of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, or they did not commemorate the birthplace of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But remember, I mean that's something that we will discuss in a lot of detail. We will prove from the Quran and from the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that this is something that is not a bid'ah. It is not an innovation. This is something established directly from the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the sunnah of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And not one companion, many, many companions commemorated the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But that will come later. First, we will begin with the actual birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And to commemorate the actual birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, that is something that no one can disbelieve in that. To celebrate the actual birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what does that mean? It means to be happy for the arrival of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to this dunya. Are we not happy for the arrival of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to this dunya? I mean, which believer or which Muslim who recites the shahada, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashadu anna muhammad nabduhu wa rasulu, would be able to say that I am not happy for the arrival of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No one would say that. Because the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is the advent of Rasulullah, the arrival of Rasulullah, the coming of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No one can deny that. So in this context, that this is something new now. You probably never heard this before. You've probably been debating about the permissibility of the birthday of Rasulullah, the birthplace of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But I am actually discussing the actual birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Mawlid is not only birthplace or birthday, it also refers to the actual birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So in that context, it is known with necessity in Islam to celebrate Mawlid. Do you see? It is something which is known with necessity in Islam to celebrate Mawlid in that context. So we have to, we have to be happy for the arrival of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this should not be a point of dissension in the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a point of conflict. This should not divide the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because no one can ever say that I'm not happy for the arrival of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if you ask someone, brother, are you happy that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to this dunya? Yes, I am happy. Then you are celebrating the Mawlid. Then you are celebrating the Mawlid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Because you can't deny that. And that is Mawlid, that is the masdar, the verbal noun. Ha. Then the next issue is the birthday of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and the birthplace of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's another thing. And which Muslim, remember, who, who will ever say that I am not happy if they do not know the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And that's something that we have failed to do. Hakikat, and to be honest, in this living in this country, I mean, we should have introduced the character of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the non-Muslims. How Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a mercy for humanity. He's a mercy for women, mercy for children, mercy for animals, mercy for Muslims, non-Muslims. Every creation of Allah jalla wa ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a mercy for everything. Even birds, insects, everything. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a mercy for everyone. Who wouldn't be happy? Like, since, for instance, I've just mentioned the sisters. If a sister was familiar 
of the greatness of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. If she knew what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam did for the sisters, how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is a mercy. You know, in, in, in our time, people think that Islam is a religion that oppresses women. You know, this is a big accusation against Islam and against the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And we, we, we can't blame these people. We are to blame ourselves because we have not, we have failed to introduce Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to these people. So Rasulullah, if a sister was to know that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave her the right to live, she would never say that I will not celebrate the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do you know what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did for sisters, for women? You know, if you study the history, the, the pre-Islamic history, the uh, Babylonian civilization, if you study their history, women didn't have the right to live. Do you know that if a husband, if a man was to murder someone, instead of that man, they would put his wife to death. And he had the right to do that. If you study the Greek civilization, in the Greek civilization, a woman was considered to be an evil being cause of evil and misfortune. This was before the, the, the arrival of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the, the Roman civilization, if a man wanted to murder a woman, he had the right, he had the legal right to murder a woman, his wife. He had the, legally, it was permissible for him, allowed for him to take the life of his wife. This was before Islam. This was before the arrival of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in the Egyptian civilization, it was known that, that women, they were known to be a symbol of, of Satan. And in the Arab civilization, we know that daughters were, were buried alive. There was a companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there is something that when I think about it, I laugh so much that I can't control my laughter. And then there is another thing, when I think about it, when I remember it, I cry so much, but I can't control my tears. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, what is that? He said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the time of jahiliyyah, in the time of ignorance, there was a time when once I, I went on a journey, and I decided to take my God with me, my ma'bud with me, the idol that I used to worship. And he said, the, the idol that I carried it, and it was very heavy. And I thought that I will die under the burden of my ma'bud if I carry this ma'bud with me. So he decided to create another ma'bud. He said, I got together some, some flowers, some atta, and he said, then I made uh, uh, the, 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 the idol. And he said, then I made the idol with atta, and then I, I, I weighed it, and it was a lot lighter. And I decided I'll take the, the ma'bud with me. So I took the ma'bud with me on the journey, and then wherever I would stop, I would worship the ma'bud, I would worship my God. And then he said that the food that I had taken with me, it had finished. And then for some days I became very patient and I did sabr, but then I lost patience, I lost sabr. And then one day I felt so hungry that I just prepared that pata and I made some khubz with it, some bread with it, and I started to eat it. And he said, oh God, if you're not going to help me now, then when will you help me? The companion said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that this, is, this was the state of our ignorance, this is how ignorant we were. He said, when I remember, when I think about that, I can't stop laughing. I cannot stop laughing. I can't control my laughter when I think about it. This is how ignorant we were. And there's one thing when I think about that, I can't stop crying. The Prophet said, what is that? He said, Ya Rasulullah in the time of ignorance, in the time of jahiliyyah, there was a time when I went out from my, from my place and my wife was, was pregnant. And you know the, the kind of cultural pressure that we had at that time about having daughters. He said, I traveled from my city to another city I went on a journey, and when I came back, when I left, my wife was pregnant, and when I came back, my wife told me that I had a daughter. There are three narrations on this. One narration is that she, had, uh, she didn't tell him at first, but later on she, uh, she told him. And he said, when I saw my daughter, she came running to me, and she embraced me, she hugged me, and she expressed a lot of love for me. And he said, I, felt, I fell in love with her. I, had, I was attached to my, my daughter, but the pressure of the community was so much I thought that she would bring shame to me, to my ancestors, and to my family. This is what they thought about daughters. 
And he said that my wife had this fear as well, that one day I may take her life. I may kill her, I may murder her, I may bury her alive. That's how they treated the daughters. He, he said that but one day, the, the culture that we were in, the, the, the pressure that I had, he said I couldn't take it anymore. And she was growing old and she, she was close to uh, the age of maturity. And she said that one, he said one day, I just told my wife, I said, give her some good clothing, dress her up and comb her hair and I'm taking her out for a party. And he said, my wife knew that she suspected me. She had this shock that, that I'm about to do what the Arabs do at that time. He said that I told my wife and he said, but she couldn't do anything. She was crying. He said, my wife was crying and she was combing her hair and she, she dressed her up in good clothing and new kapde. And he said that when she was crying, my daughter asked my wife, she asked, mother, why are you crying? And the mother couldn't inform her. She couldn't tell her. And she had a lot of love. And she said, look, daddy is taking me out today. This is the first time my father is taking me out. You should be happy. Muhammad,